shortly after I made the video about my uh, Reolink Argus 2 about six months ago, I purchased this camera, which is an RLC 420, sorry, 410W, I think. Um, I'm just going to overlay the actual uh, number on the screen. And I bought this because the Argus 2 was great, but it had two issues uh, for the particular application that I was planning to you know, that I needed for this camera is, uh, first of all, I needed one which has the RSTP, RTSP stream and also the, the URL to get the image. And that is not available on a battery power camera, just to conserve battery power. So I said, yeah, that's f f uh, fair enough. The other thing, I needed something which has a little bit more, a little better Wi-Fi reception. This is why I picked this camera, because as you can see, it has like two Wi-Fi antennas. And this is just at the end of my Wi-Fi range uh, in the house. And I have to say that this one works perfectly. And as you can see, it is mounted on a waterproof uh, junction box because, well, we are, you're going to see in the unboxing video, but it has a couple of leads and connectors on the, on the backside. So that has to be, you know, hidden somewhere where it is waterproof. And um, that's it. So the only cable which goes in is the power. So that's the 12 volt that I have the converter inside. And then of course the, uh, the internet gets there using Wi-Fi. And as I said, this particular model has been here for about six months now. It's working perfectly. But I do have the, f uh, the unboxing footage that I had taken six months ago. So let's watch that first. And I'm going to show you how the app works uh, for this camera. It is different from the Argus 2 in many different regards. Um, while obviously it's not battery powered, it doesn't have uh, motion detection, the PIR motion detection. So it can only detect motion based on uh, you know the video motion detection changes in the in the actual video feed, which is uh, it's always worse than the PIR one. But um, I will see how that actually works, and um, and yeah. But otherwise, I think it's the same. It's uh, actually high resolution than full HD. So we are just going to look at the specs uh, in the app. But um, so that's the plan that I'm going to be using this. And because it's not a battery powered camera it should be supporting all the RSTP and the image fee the features that, I'm, uh, that I will be using in uh, uh, Node-RED to integrate it into my home automation system. And even though I already unboxed this, I just want to show what you get in the, in the packs. So obviously there is a camera and the mount, so this fixed mount, uh, nice metal sturdy mount, the two antennas, uh, there is a cable coming out of the camera, so that's where you are going to have the power connected. Um, I still haven't figured out what this button is for, but I'm pretty sure I will, I will find it out soon. There is a micro SD card slot under this cover on the camera. And so that's the camera itself. And as I said, a, uh, what is it, 12 volt, 1 amp, quite standard uh, power supply obviously it is indoors uh, it comes with two plugs so there is a european plug and there is also a uk plug uh, you're getting a small network cable there is a power extension lead i think it's five meters and mounting screws sticker, the drilling template, and there is a quick start guide and another quick start guide. Well, different languages, so three languages here, two languages here. Uh, German, English, French, Italian, and Spaniel. I'm not going to go through the setup process because, yeah, you just read a quick uh, manual and, you know, it's self-explanatory and it's quite easy to follow the steps. So I'm just going to head directly into the, into the app. As you can see, I have the old Argus 2 here, which is looking at my garden and it's on the fence where I don't have power. So that's idea for battery operation. And I have the, um, the solar panel facing the sort of like south, southwest. And I haven't touched that camera for six months. So that's been running there with the solar panel. It is always charged. And of course it was winter. So, you know, it can uh, deal with that power sort of, sort of consumption in the winter. So I'm pretty sure that it's going to be fine in the summer as well. And that's the camera that we are looking at the moment. And you can see me here. And I've actually turned off the, uh, the Wi-Fi because uh, again, 
uh, it's just too weak for my a phone to pick up my Wi-Fi. So you can see that it works pretty much, you know, very good on the on the 4G as well. And since I've done a fairly extensive video on the um, the whole app, um, I think I'm just going to run through the um, you know how it works for this particular camera. As you can see, we have the usual options here to change the uh, um, the feed quality. I just leave it on fluent. I think this is the, probably the lowest resolution, and uh, that's definitely going to be the best for 4G now. Uh, so you have a couple of options. You can put it on full screen, and uh, you have the camera and the uh, this uh, the photo and the video icon here to take a snapshot. And you can also turn on the sound. So yeah, there is not much sound at the moment. I mean, just the birds, and um, yeah, and then you can review the clips and. You know old footage here i haven't set it up for uh, motion detection because um, we are going to go into the motion detection options but you know this still relies on image motion detection and what i've noticed that um, no matter what sort of uh, sensitivity i'm trying to set it will always pick up a lot of false uh, uh, false negatives so i'm not really using that and as you can see it has the sd camera in, sd card installed and actually it does create a few uh, recordings. These are when, you know, whenever I look at the footage as well, but um, I just turn off the motion detection because I don't think it works reliably for me. Okay, so let's go back, let's go to the settings. The main options are the same, so you can have, you can enable the push notifications. So I haven't, oh, I think I probably have the motion detection enabled at the moment. Yeah, I have the motion detection set to 15% uh, or whatever, 15. And also what you can do here is you can set motion detection zone. So you can see that I have set a small zone here. So, well, it's not live footage now, but uh, sort of like the uh, one part of the driveway and one part of the, the footpath to the, uh, to the trash cans. And that's the one, uh, that's the two areas where it is uh, going to detect motions. Because I have turned off the push notifications here on the top, it means that it's just going to create a recording, but it's not going to send me a notification to my phone. So I don't get uh, annoyed by the false negatives. It just creates the recording. I can go back and I can watch them if I want to, or just ignore them. And, oops, sorry. And yeah, on the display, these are the different options that you can set. I have left everything on default. I haven't uh, changed the exposure. It works pretty well, you know, on daytime. It definitely works on low light as well. The only thing I noticed is uh, this uh, pine tree gets illuminated quite a lot with the low light. So that gets really bright. Some of the others uh, don't get much darker. For example, if somebody's uh, standing outside, but it still works fine. I mean, I can pick up the details. I can see if it's like a delivery van here or somebody else. Yeah, you can set some recordings here. So I turned on the recording. So it's going to record 15 seconds after the motion. Of course, it's going to override old ones. You can also set a schedules that, let's say you only want uh, to meet, create recordings on weekdays, on weekends, or in the evenings. I've set it 24-7. Uh, so I haven't made any changes there. And because these are short recordings anyway, I mean, the SD card is most probably going to create a uh, store like month of recordings anyway. So I don't feel like that I need to, you know, reserve on battery power. I haven't set up email alerts. Uh, well, I have it enabled, but I haven't set up the details. I don't want, um, you know, e uh, getting emails about uh, motion detection. And again, notifications, you can reuse that if you really want to, but I just left it 24 seven. I just turn off the notifications altogether. And that's the push here on the top of the screen under, under the word settings. Record audio, you can do some infrared lights. Of course, it's, uh, you know, it's auto. So the IR lets turn on in the evening. And um, I would say that's pretty much it. Um, so I haven't enabled any cloud storage. So everything gets recorded on the SD card, which is in the device. And uh, you can set up uh, FTP upload if you want to. But as I said, there is plenty of uh, free space left on this SD card, even though it's, 
uh, what, what was it? Sorry, let me just go back. It says free space, 400 megs. So I think this is a 32 gig SD card. So it still hasn't filled up the card in six months. So I think that's, that's yeah, more than enough. On the info, you get some other info on the device. What's the name of it? What's the version? Oh, you see the model RLC 410, 410W. And um, also I'm going to leave some specs on the, on the screen so you can see sort of like resolution and angle. One thing I've noticed is I do remember when the Argus 2 was in the same spot and I believe that it had more, you know, visual coverage of the area. So I think there was more sort of like this driveway here. And I think probably the, on the other side, the, um, uh, this uh, small building where the trash cans are that was visible as well. This has a slightly narrower field of view, but uh, it still covers the main areas that I want to see, so I'm quite happy with that. That's good. And of course, there are a couple of other options uh, here in the in the menu. How you can how you want to look at the uh, uh, the feeds. As I said, there is this uh, full screen button, so it turns full screen. And yeah, of course, you need to rotate the uh, the the phone. And there are some other options here. So, for example, in this immersive, you can see all your devices. I do have some other devices which are not actually mine. That's uh, uh, something that I set up in my father-in-law's uh, place. But you can see the Argus 2 on the top and this new one here in the middle. And they have like a four-channel uh, device that I've also set up in my account. So, if anything needs to be done, I can look at their footage as well or, you know, make some changes or change the settings, that sort of stuff. In general, I'm quite happy with the app. I have to say that I don't really use the app. Probably I haven't opened the app for about a month because I'm using the integration that I talked about in other videos. So um, I have some Wi-Fi doorbells here. So these are the cheap 433 megahertz ones. So that and the signal of that gets picked up with my Node-RED. Uh, running on the Raspberry Pi and that gets the camera image and send it, all, send it to me on Telegram. So I can see who is coming and uh, these are the type of images that I get. And as you can see, I can, you know, pretty much tell whether it's the, you know, the postman, delivery man uh, or, or somebody else who is coming. And that's more than enough for me. So this was my quick review of the Reolink RLC 4. 10W Wi-Fi camera and actually I'm recording this on my older Argus 2 and I wanted to get this video out <laughs> well even though I purchased this camera six months ago so I had quite a lot of time to to actually do this and mostly because there is a new model which is coming out and I've um, I've been told that I would be getting a review sample so hopefully there is going to be another Reolink uh, review coming out soon so thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.